Hey guys, it's Meredith again, and today we're going to talk about the DLCO. So what does that mean? So what it stands for is the diffusing capacity of the lung for carbon monoxide. So that's what the D, the L, the C, and the O stand for, okay? So how do we do it? So basically there's me, um, and I'm going to breathe in some air that has a whole bunch of carbon monoxide in it, okay? And we're going to know how much that is. It's going to be measured. And then I'm going to breathe out, and what I breathe out should have less carbon monoxide in it because my body should have absorbed the carbon monoxide through diffusion in the lung. So why does this matter? So if we're doing another test, we want to know how we're going to use it. So we talked about spirometry and how it can tell us about airflow limitation. We talked about volumes and how if they're too big, it can indicate overinflation or air trapping. If they're too small, it can indicate restriction. So what does the DLCO help with? So the DLCO can help us distinguish um, between a few different disease states that we may have identified in those categories already mentioned. So back to this diagram of the alveolar capillary interface, because that's really what we're testing here, right? How good those air sacs get the oxygen out of the air and into the bloodstream. So if you have a thickening of your alveolar wall, um, say from fibrosis, pulmonary edema, pneumonia, really anything like that, um, then that can cause less uh, CO, in this case, or oxygen, um, to be transferred across the membrane. Alternatively, if you have trouble with your capillary system, say from a pulmonary embolism or pulmonary hypertension, uh, less CO is going to be able to be taken up on the other side of the membrane. So what's the differential diagnosis for a decreased DLCO? So I'm going to break it into two categories. One, alveolar, and two, capillary, because again, we're at the alveolar-capillary interface. So under alveolar, things like fibrosis um, that kind of cause a thickening of the wall and a decrease in the volume, and emphysema, which essentially causes destruction um, of the walls and a decrease in the surface area. So really, these are just two examples, but anything that causes a decrease in the surface area or the volume of the lung is going to cause a lower DLCO. On the other side, um, pulmonary embolism, pulmonary hypertension, um, and even something like anemia can cause a decrease on the capillary side. So there it's a decrease in blood flow or a decrease in contact of you know the red blood cells and hemoglobin with um, the interface. So what could increase DLCO? So an increase in blood flow could do that, and that is seen in things like polycythemia and um, pulmonary hemorrhage. One thing I do want to point out is that this is sort of a dynamic process. So when your alveoli goes in, say you're breathing out, then your um, capillary actually can expand, um, causing there to be a more uh, blood flow through the capillary, but a smaller um, surface area and volume at the alveolar surface. And when you um, take a deep breath in and your alveoli expands, this can actually compress the um, capillary having the opposite effect. Something else that's important is that your lung is not uniform. So while you may have big open alveoli in some places, you may have smaller or maybe even fibrotic alveoli in other places. Similarly, the vessels may have a greater blood supply in certain areas, but say in an area of a clot, they may have a lower blood supply. This whole concept is known as the heterogeneity of the lung. So while there are a lot more nuances to this, and it can certainly be discussed more, I just want to summarize what we've talked about so far. So the DLCO, in my mind, is an adjunctive test, and it can help us distinguish disease states that we were thinking about from the spirometry and the volumes. A decrease in DLCO is either a decrease in surface area, volume, or blood flow. And lastly, remember, the lung is heterogeneous. So, you know, this is a sum of the parts. Um, so just take it with a grain of salt. So that's all I got, guys. Again, please feel free to email me, mkgreer at emory.edu, if you have any questions. Next, we're going to talk about um, cases and actually go through a couple of my real patients. And I'm hoping that when we do that, you'll have a better understanding of the concept of PFTs.